Hey y'all, I am back with another what's for dinner. First up, now I know that St. Patrick's Day has already came and gone, but I still wanted to show y'all what I made my family for St. Patrick's Day dinner. Maybe y'all can remember it for next year, but I got those really cute raviolis at Costco. I ended up cooking the whole batch, which I'm glad I did because we ate it all. And I just cooked those according to the package directions. And I'm making a vodka sauce to go over them, which is one of my all time, like absolute favorite things. It's so quick and easy to my skillet. I just melt down a couple tablespoons of butter. I throw in about a tablespoon of olive oil and then I saute in some garlic. And then I add in about a quarter cup of vodka, which is about the amount of that little bottle that I just showed y'all. If I knew that, I wouldn't have dirtied up that measuring cup, but I'll know it for next time. It's gonna get really bubbly once you add that in. You wanna let it cook out for at least 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup of tomato paste. I just kinda eyeball that and do four small like spoonfuls of it. And with my silicone whisk, I'm just gonna you know stir it around until it gets kind of smooth I really love this step in the sauce it really like deepens the flavor of that tomato paste it's so good and I add in just a little pinch of some crushed red pepper flakes and then I'm going to do about three quarters of a cup of some heavy cream they are adding in some onion powder. Traditional vodka sauces it does call for actual onion to be cooked in with the butter and olive oil, but I always just do it this way and we always love it. Um, and then I'm just gonna stir it until all of it comes together. I love the color of this sauce and I'm just gonna let that, you know, heat through for a few minutes, it takes very little time. And then I just season it to taste with some salt and pepper. That is it. You can save some pasta water if you want to, to thin it out, but I love how thick this sauce is. So I put it over those little shamrock themed raviolis, topped it with some Parmesan cheese. Absolutely delicious. I served it with some garlic bread and I made this little side salad that I saw in just an old cookbook that I was looking at. It's very simple, but it's a combination I hadn't done before. All it is is spinach, some Swiss cheese that I shredded myself, and then I cooked and crumbled some bacon and just tossed all of it in a Caesar dressing. It was phenomenal. I'm definitely going to be making that on repeat. It would go good with so many different dinners, but this was an awesome meal. Next up, I'm trying out this recipe for Mexican beef and rice soup. So to my Dutch oven, I'm tossing in two pounds of ground beef and I'm just gonna take my little meat chopper tool and get that meat broken apart. I'm gonna cook it down on about a medium high heat. And I did buy ground beef with a little extra fat in it that I typically buy. So there's a lot of grease. I was just trying to save a few dollars, but I did just run that through my colander. I did the put a piece of full in the drain method. That way, you know, it collects all the grease and once it hardens, you can toss it out. I'm going to season that meat with onion powder. Um, you could also cook an onion in with the ground beef if you prefer that. I also just threw in a big spoonful of minced garlic just straight from the jar and I'm just going to cook this meat for a couple more minutes. I'm going to try to, you know, cook that garlic and just get everything seasoned really well. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in three tablespoons of taco seasoning. I am using the old El Paso one. I have a big container of it, but really any taco seasoning is fine. I have never met a taco season I didn't like. I buy the store brand all the time, but I got that stirred in good. And then I'm going to be adding in four cans of beef broth. It calls for two quarts, which is eight cups, and Save a Lot only had the cans. They didn't have the cartons, so that's what I use. I'm also using just a regular size can of diced tomatoes. It did say to drain it, but I did not. I'm also going to add in two cups of frozen corn, a can of black beans that I drained and rinsed, one cup of tomato sauce, and I am going to be squeezing the juice of one small lime in there. And then I'm adding in two teaspoons of salt and one cup of some uncooked long grain white rice. So I'm going to get that rice quickly stirred in there, make sure it's all submerged in the liquid. I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit and wait for that to come up to a low boil and then I will cover it with a lid, turn the heat down a bit, and I let it simmer anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. To go along with it, I'm also going to make a sour cream cornbread. So I'm just using one box of Jiffy cornbread mix, one can of cream style corn. You'll need a cup of sour cream. I typically don't buy a lot of light products, but I recently discovered that we really like the taste of it just as good, specifically this great value light sour cream. So I guess we can save a couple calories. Um, I'm going to add in a quarter cup of sugar, a quarter cup of vegetable oil, 
and you'll also need two eggs. So I'm just using that same measuring cup that I measured the sour cream out in. That way I can ensure that there will be no eggshells in this. So I'm gonna pour that on in the bowl. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt and just a pinch of some cayenne pepper. Then with my spoon, I'm gonna give it a really good mix. And then I'm gonna go grab an eight by eight casserole dish, spray it with some Pam nonstick cooking spray. Gonna pour out all of that cornbread batter. My oven's preheated to 350 degrees and I let it bake for about 50 minutes is what mine took. Um, so back to this soup, I tested it. Oh, I tested the rice, I should say, to make sure that it was tender. And it was, so I cut off the heat and added in a little bit of some fresh cilantro. And that was it, it's ready to be served. As you can see, this makes enough for an army. It made a ton and it is super filling because of that rice. So we topped our bowls with some sour cream, some shredded sharp cheddar cheese, and a little extra cilantro. Here is how that cornbread came out. It was super moist and it reminded me a lot of a like corn casserole. It's just in a form that you can pick up. Super good. I would totally make that again. And it paired so perfectly with this soup, which was also amazing. It has so much flavor to it. And we really love the addition of the rice. So hands down a new family favorite. I highly recommend it. On this night, I'm going to be making a White Castle casserole. Yes, two ground beef recipes back to back. So you're going to need a box of onion soup mix and you're going to pour both envelopes into two pounds of ground beef. I just got it cooking over about a medium high heat. I'm going to cook all of that together until my meat is fully cooked through. This is the only seasoning you'll need. All of that flavor comes in those packets. Trust me, it's fine. I'm sure some of y'all that have been watching me for a while are probably shocked about the onion soup mix but I've recently discovered I can handle the dehydrated onions. So I've got a 9 by 13 casserole dish out. I've sprayed it with some Pam cooking spray and you're going to need one tube of crescent rolls and you're just going to lay that out in the bottom. I went with the Save-A-Lot brand. It was like half the price of the name brand and we really liked it. I would definitely buy it again. But you want to definitely pinch everything together and just kind of press it out until it is an even sheet with like no seams popping open or anything like that. You want to be able to pick it up like a hamburger. So you want it to hold up. So once you do that, you can take your meat that you have drained really well and pour that on top. If you don't drain that meat really good, you are going to have some soggy crescent rolls. That's never good. Um, and as you can see with my spoon, I'm just making sure to spread it out into an even layer. And now I'm just going to start covering the meat in slices of cheese. I believe I ended up using about nine slices. I did like go ahead and take everything out of the package and have it like all prepped and ready to lay on there prior to starting this just to make it go more smoothly. You could definitely use any cheese that you want to here, any flavor, make it your own. You could even do shredded cheese if you want it to, but when it comes to anything like cheeseburger related, we really like just the classic American cheese slices that comes in the plastic wrapper. I know it's processed, but we love the way it tastes and the way it melts for, you know, like a cheeseburger. So now you're gonna need another tube of crescent rolls. And this layer is definitely a little bit more tricky, especially since once it touches that cheese, it's a little bit harder to press together. So I had to turn off my camera and process how I was gonna do it, but I did get it done. You could also buy those crescent dough sheets to make it go a lot smoother. I'll probably do that next time. But I did end up baking this at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. And then when it came out, I'm just going to cut it into little squares. serve these alongside some Clausen pickles. I also air fried some Rally's french fries. Those are my kids favorite. And then I just have a little bit of ketchup and mustard on the side to dip these into. And these turned out really tasty. We actually really enjoyed them. They were really simple and I love how it had very few ingredients. Also, if you have never heard of White Castle where you live, it's just a little fast food restaurant that is famous for their little cheeseburger sliders. Up next, I'm making gumbo for the first time. This is something that I have 
never tried and have always been curious about. And let me tell y'all, this was our number one favorite recipe from this whole video. So I hope that you made it this far. But I got my inspiration for this from the Little Cajun House on TikTok. I love her videos. I will definitely link the gumbo one in my description box for y'all to go watch. I did have to make you know, a few changes just because of what I could get available to me around here. Um, I also did cut the recipe in half, but this is how she marinates her chicken. So I've got two boneless skinless chicken breasts. I've drizzled on some mustard, Worcestershire sauce, and some Frank's hot sauce. And for the seasonings, I'm doing some salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and this is the Cajun seasoning that I'm using. She used a K-Fred one. I could not find that around me, and it was a little high on Amazon, so I just used what I had, but I'm gonna go in with my hands and just toss all of that around and make sure that they're nice and coated, nice and seasoned, Then I went and washed my hands, and I'm going to tightly cover this bowl with some cling wrap and let that sit in the fridge to marinate all day. Now, fast forward to dinner time. I am going to be making a homemade roux for the first time. This really intimidated me. I feel like I watched a million videos on it. She used a jar of roux. Um, I could not find that in any stores near me. We even went for a little spring break trip in Tennessee and there was none there either. I could find it on Amazon, but it was like $15 a jar and I just couldn't justify it. So it's just a half a cup of vegetable oil and a half a cup of all-purpose flour. And you just stir that continuously over a medium heat and it could take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes of continuous stirring. Um, it really wasn't too, too bad though. I feel like mine got done quicker than what I thought it would. Um, you want it to be like a chocolate color. I know some people go even darker than that, but I was nervous and I felt like I should stop there. I didn't want to burn it, but I added in one green bell pepper that I chopped up, one stalk of celery, and I did lots of onion powder, or of course you could do an actual onion if you wanted to. I let that cook for about five minutes and then I threw in a big spoonful of minced garlic, let that cook for a couple of minutes. And now I'm going to be adding in six cups of chicken stock. I'm using one full carton and then I had about a half a carton left in my fridge. I was hoping that there would be at least two cups in there. I'll never know, but I know that it worked out in the end. I'm giving that a good stir, making sure to get all of the flavorful bits off of the bottom. And then I'm going to grab my Cajun seasoning and I'm going to add a good amount into the pot. I was going for around like two tablespoons, so I kind of eyeballed that. I added in a little bit of extra salt, not too much because that Cajun season has plenty. I also did a lot of black pepper and a lot of garlic powder. And I'm just going to let this sit while I get the chicken going. So I'm not going to fully cook this. I'm just looking to get a good sear on it. So I've got a hot skillet with oil. It's over about a medium high heat and I'm gonna let it cook for a couple of minutes on each side. And while I'm letting that go, I'm gonna grab my smoked sausage and I'm going to thinly slice that up. Here I am flipping over the chicken. And as you can see, it has developed a beautiful brown crust. That is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna take that over to a cutting board and just chop it into kind of large pieces. As you can see, my broth is bullying and that chicken is definitely raw in the middle. That's what you're looking for. And you want to, you know, slowly dunk it into the pot. You don't want it splashing everywhere. And I let this cook for about 30 minutes. And I really love this method with the chicken of marinating it, um, searing it, and then letting it boil. It made for the best textured chicken, I'm telling you. Um, so after the chicken was cooked, I added in lots of dried parsley. And then I'm going to uh, toss in my sliced smoked sausage. Sorry, y'all can probably hear my dog outside barking. It's getting me a little all over the place. But um, I also cooked up six boiled eggs and I'm dropping that in there. That's what she did. And I thought that is really cool. It's something different. And after I got the sausage and the eggs in there, I let it cook for a final 10 minutes. And as you can see, that broth is like silky, velvety, and like a little bit thickened. And that's it. So you serve it over some white rice. I cook that over to the side. I'm putting plenty of the meat in there, one of those eggs, and you want lots of broth. And she says to put potato salad 
over top of it and that really caught my attention because potato salad is like one of my all-time favorite foods I made that earlier in the day and I put this salad supreme seasoning in the potato salad and on top and this is the finished bowl this has such a unique flavor to it I have never tasted anything quite like it and we all absolutely loved it the kids didn't eat the egg or the potato salad but they loved everything else and they both went back for second so that's a big thing around here even Josh, who can be a little bit picky, was even like, wow, this is super good. So I cannot wait to make it again. Lastly, I'm going to be making some garlic brown sugar pork chops. So to a large skillet, I've added in about four tablespoons of vegetable oil. And I'm finally using up the last of my bone-in pork chops that I had in the freezer. So I'm only going to be doing three at a time because I didn't want to overcrowd the pan. I did place those seasoned side down and now I'm just seasoning the other side the same way. I just did some Laurie's garlic salt and some black pepper. And again... I'm not trying to cook these all the way through. I'm just wanting to sear both sides. So I cook them for about three minutes per side. So I'm getting those removed to a separate plate. And then I'm going to do that last pork chop. So I just needed a little bit more oil. And I'm going to repeat the same process. And also for those that don't eat pork, this recipe would also work with chicken, of course. So now to that skillet. I did try to remove some of the stuff on the bottom just so that it wouldn't burn um, but I still left quite a bit in there for flavor and I've added a stick of butter I know that sounds like a lot I thought that too I did double the recipe but I honestly think that I could have kept the sauce amount the same because it was quite a bit but I also chopped up a ton of fresh garlic just using my little mini chopper to help me dump that in there along with three tablespoons of brown sugar I'm using a half a tablespoon measuring spoon that's why you saw me do it six times but I'm gonna let that cook together and then I'm gonna add just a small pinch of some crushed red pepper flakes and I let that simmer for a few minutes until it gets kind of foamy as you can see here and then I'm just going to take my pork chops one by one and I'm going to make sure that they are coated on both sides in that glaze and I do also have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. I'm also going to pour in the juices that accumulated on the plate back into that sauce for extra flavor but yeah make sure that you are using an oven proof skillet for this recipe and um, this particular one is um, you could also do cast iron for this recipe that would also work really well but I pop that in there for about eight minutes and here is what they come out looking like they smell so good I serve these alongside some homemade mashed potatoes where I drizzled some of that garlic butter brown sugar glaze over them I also cooked up some green beans. Now, as for these pork chops, we all just thought that they were all right. They weren't bad by any means, but I did have much higher expectations. It just felt like something was missing and I can't pinpoint it. So if any of y'all have some tips on how to improve this dish, I am all ears. But that is all I have for y'all today. I do hope that this was the dinner inspiration that you were looking for. I want to thank you all so much for watching the video and I'll see y'all in my next one.